Alrighty, welcome to that of a new video uh, with GeoMedia. My name is George. Uh, today we're going to go ahead and play something a little different. We're going to go ahead and, of course, play that of Gran Turismo 7, a game that's pretty much came out relatively uh, recently. Uh, we're going to go ahead and, of course, jump into this car known as the Honda S2000. Um, as pretty much most of us all do know, it is, of course, a uh, a modern classic. Um, it's one of, of course, one of the couple of Halo, Honda's Halo cars, um, of course, aside that of the uh, NSX, and of course their Type R lineup, for example, the Civic Type R, the Integra Type Rs. Um, as you know, of course, the Honda S2000 was is, and is an open top sports car, of course, known to be a convertible uh, that was manufactured uh, from the years of 1999 to 2009 for, of course, a span of 10 years. Um, it was actually pretty much made to celebrate the company's 50th anniversary. Now, of course, the name Honda S2000, of course, they got that from the one, the engine displacement, of course, for it being two liters in its first iteration. And, of course, carrying on that tradition from the previous uh, generations from the 60s. For example, the S500, 600, and the S800. Um... Of course, throughout its lifetime, there were several revisions made, uh, of course, through the pr car's production life, including changes to that of their engine. It went from an F20 to an F22C, of course, increasing displacement to 2.2 liters. In doing so, it actually lowered the red line uh, from 9,000 to around 8,000 or 8 to 8,300. But of course, it increased more torque uh, because, of course, critics were indeed um, criticizing that it was lack of too much lack of torque of course and all just top end power and nothing more um it of course the honda s2000 was always noticeable for its exceptional power output of about 124 horsepower per liter now keep in mind that was indeed a world record and it actually bested that of the previous world record holder which was the honda integra type r which actually was doing 108 horsepower per liter um now as you know in today's time with the used car market, this car is starting to become very, very unattainable uh, when it comes to prices. Um, there's even some that were even sold recently on Bring a Trailer for well over uh, 100000 in the six-figure range. Um, but yeah, in going ahead and taking a look into this car in the game and also uh, in comparison to that of real life, uh, the characteristics are somewhat similar, of course, with this being a game, it's not going to be 100% correct, but it is, of course, great to drive. As you can see, I'm pretty much going through this course with ease, but also I maxed the car out, so it's pretty much a little too OP from its predecessors or from the people that I'm racing in this, in this race, but nonetheless, let's go ahead and enjoy the video. has great great handling um, with of course changing the tires and of course uh, lowering the ride height it pretty much grips around these corners really good and I'm actually taking these with confidence and of course not a fear of oversteering or spinning out See, I'm just taking these corners at ease. I also like to go ahead and, of course, ride around on the Japanese tracks because it gives me a Wagon um, Midnight type of feel when playing this game. Uh, it gives me, of course, uh, I don't know if you remember the Tokyo Extreme Racer games. Uh, those were amazing. Uh, those were like the PS1, PS2 days uh, where you pretty much just challenge everybody on the freeways and, of course, become the well-known uh, underground street racer. Uh, they need to bring something back like that. They really do. Uh, because we all, of course, as fans uh, of these games, are craving something like that. And even though Gran Turismo 7 is an amazing game, um, it's still kind of close-minded, per se. Like, because it's nothing but closed tracks. 
Now I know I don't want to compare apples to oranges and of course compare this to Forza Horizon 5, but Forza Horizon 5 of course gives you that open world experience and of course gives you a large array of a larger array of cars and it gives you a little more, believe it or not, customization I feel uh, with of course changing some of your bumpers, uh, the wings, uh, even doing engine swaps. Um, of course, some of the engine swaps are not realistic. I mean, you know, I don't. There's no way you could. Sh you should be able to put a V8 in a freaking Civic. But here we are. Um, but yeah, this game. Other than that, is amazing. Graphics, the physics, uh, are pretty much none. Pretty much almost. I don't think anybody comes close to it in a sense. Now keep in mind I'm playing this on a PS4 and, and it's amazing how it looks. Oof. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to of course <laughs> not hit them so I'm trying to figure out a way. I'll just wait for the straights to possibly pass them up. Yeah, I was trying to avoid touching any of the other racers or hitting them to, of course, get a clean race bonus. Because, as you know, uh, Gran Turismo doesn't really give a lot of payouts in this game. The payouts are relatively small unless you, of course, do clean race bonuses and or, of course, do those championship runs. Which are relatively hard in a road car. Well, some of the races are. Now, is this a good car in this game? Oh yes, definitely. Um, now, the only thing I notice with a lot of the cars that they're putting into the game uh, as drip feed, they're putting them in the used car market. Uh, there's not a lot of cars that they're adding to the new. Um, so, you would have to wait if you haven't got this car in the game yet. I highly recommend you do, but you're going to have to pretty much wait for it to come back into the used car market. And there it is, of course, that's one of the races. Let's go to a uh, pretty much, let's do one more. Let's do another race. Let's go ahead and do another race and see what, see how this car handles. Let's, you know what, let's go ahead and actually try the scuba circuit. Now, of course, I, with the performance points, points being at 450, I for sure have an advantage over every single one of these. I think I should down tutor now the next one, of course, to give it, of course, a much more fair race and to see how it compares against them. Now, if you're liking these uh, Gran Turismo 7 content, always you know feel free to comment like subscribe and share this uh the video um if you like it i can go ahead and continue to make more uh we can of course make videos on different cars uh give a little bit of different information on every one of them if interested uh, because i like this gameplay as well i like uh pretty much playing open world games i also like playing racing games um those are of course my favorite type of genre of game gaming excuse me And yep, see, I already, I already pretty much made first place even before lap two came about. So on the next one, we'll just go ahead and, of course, I'll detune or use a car closer to the performance points class, so that way it'll be a much more challenge, a much more, uh, much more of a challenge. Excuse me.
it's also about time that uh, polyphony digital of course made the cars sound exactly how they do because if you played any of the previous iterations uh putting any type of performance parts on them sounded like a dang vacuum cleaner <laughs> VTech. Yeah, it's, it's handling this track very, very well. Now, I'm only using medium tires. Well, actually, uh, race medium tires. So I, it'd probably be, it'll probably handle much more if I throw on some uh, the racing sports. Excuse me, the racing softs. Oh man, it's handling this track like with ease on all these corners. I know my driving line's not perfect, but of course practice will make perfect. I uh, will get better, of course, in cutting down my lap times. And there it is, of course, race number two complete. Here's a quick little replay of that race. The cinematography on this is amazing. Like, it looks so smooth. It looks so realistic. It looks like we're actually watching, like, a legitimate race on TV. Of course, with future videos, we'll go ahead and, of course, do some more tuning. Because I didn't really tune this car at all. The only thing I did was lower the ride height and slap on the tires. We'll go ahead and, of course, uh, mess with uh, gear ratios. We'll go ahead and mess with uh, a couple of other settings to see if it'll help us uh, become faster or not. This third person camera view is amazing. The dynamic time change in this game is also amazing. You could pretty much see that it's already starting to become sunset mid-race. Now the previous games, it, there was, I believe, there might have been of course a dynamic time change as well, but it wasn't emphasized as hard as it is in this one including that of the weather. That's amazing how they made so, so much changes to make the game feel entirely different and pretty much entirely new. It's such an amazing car on a great track. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and, of course, start to continue to make um, some more GT7 content. So if you, of course, if you like this and enjoy this, as mentioned previously, like, comment, share, and subscribe. 
and uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll be back with more later on and thank you for watching so much